uh, we're doing problems 13 um, or fundamentals of problem 13 of chapter 13 we're going to be doing 13 14 in this case and this is where things begin to get a little more complex but when we slow it down we're going to see that they're really not that complex it's just um, it's just long and tedious and um, it's it's mostly algebra plugging in substituting equations into one another and stuff like that but the hard part that you guys think it's hard might be the easiest part of this problem um, the 0.2 kilogram ball is sh ball is blown through the smooth vertical circular tube whose shape is defined by so they give you a so no, we're doing we're I guess let's take it back we're, we're in the cylindrical coordinate um, system now it's doing the same thing equations of motion right force and acceleration but in cylindrical coordinates. What that means is they're going to be giving us, or in this case they give us, the radius or the position of the particle, sine theta. And when they do that, this is right ahead. Let's go ahead and get the, the velocity, r dot, right, which will be 0.6. Okay, times cosine theta, you with me? Times theta dot. Okay, remember that theta dot always comes out because of the chain rule. And the next thing will be our theta double dot. Okay, so this is the what the little tricky a little more tricky but but not really. Um, and this will be minus 0.6 um, sine theta theta double dot times theta dot sorry theta dot times theta dot okay plus 0.6 cosine theta theta double dot okay so that's the derivative First, deri first hand derivative over here, second hand derivative. Uh, th th since they give it to us right away, we're just going to do that, right? Because we're going to need to get the accelerations in order to do the force equations, okay? And figure out what they want us to ask or, or what they want us to figure out. The next part will be um, they also give us theta is equal to pi t squared okay pi t squared right and that's radians right so one time derivative will give us two pi t okay and then another der time derivative will give us two pi okay so now let's get the radial acceleration term in the in the cylindrical um, uh, acceleration term. So let's see. We have, you know, one thing I, I like to do is just w write down what it is. It's going to be r double dot minus r theta dot squared. Okay, so that's the radial acceleration. And then this term will be r theta double dot plus 2 r theta, or r dot theta dot. Ugh, gets so confusing saying dot this, double dot this. Okay. So now we already have everything. Um, one extra step that you guys might consider is actually just finding what these values are at the time and position that they want you to figure them out at. So where t is in seconds, determine the magnitude of force F exerted by a blower in the ball when t equals 0.5 seconds. Okay, so when t equals 0.5 seconds, at least we can figure this part out. Okay, um, let's see if I even wrote them down. I don't think I did. Um, but we know this will be 
2 pi because it's not time dependent. If we plug in 0.5 here, we'll just get pi, right? And then we get 0.25 pi. Okay, at least we have that. And then when we plug in, uh, what's it called? Our theta, let's see. All right, so we plug those thetas into um, into our equation on the right hand side, the, the position coordinates or the position variables, which is position, velocity, and acceleration terms. We'll end up getting r equals, let's see, 0.4243. And then we get r, r, r dot is 1.4243. And then our double dot is minus 1.52. So this will be, are we in meters? Let's see. Yeah, we're in meters per second, guys. Meters per second, meters per, sec per second squared. And these will just be meters. OK, so that the hard part is done once you're able to decipher what these are. Now it's just plug and chug from here, so we're just going to plug in those values, and we're going to get um, minus 5.707 meters per second squared. And then for this term, we're going to get 11.04 radians per second squared. Okay. So if you're here, you're like 75% done. Now the hard part. Um, now we got to set up our equations of motion for the particle, for the little smooth ball, I guess. So we're going to have, let's change colors. So let's try to free body diagram here. Okay, so this is the ball. Okay. Now let's see what are the forces that are acting on this ball. Well, we know one of them is going to be F, big F, which is what we're looking for. Okay. Another force that we can never outrun on Earth is the weight. Okay. Then we have um, the normal force, which is going to be um, the normal force that's done on the particle by the right side of that tube. And I, only, I did it going towards that way since it's getting, you know, since it's technically like rolling along the inside of the tube. That's the side that I decided would be um, in contact with the particle. Oh no. Anyway, so let's keep going. So now uh, we have the normal force. Okay. And then something very important, sort of, tr sort of tricky, is um, where is your coordinate system? Okay. So we know that R is. you know, going in this direction, because at the instant theta equals 0.25 pi, right, that's also equal to pi over 4, which is 45 degrees. So we know that the angle that the radial component of the position makes with the horizontal is going to be 45 degrees. which means that so this is the radial component and then our our cylindrical component will be in this direction okay so now we have our coordinate system set up now we just have to 
sum up the forces along each component the tangential or the sorry the, the cylindrical one and the radial component okay so let's do that next and from now on the problems will begin getting a bit harder unfortunately sorry guys they're not all gonna be five minutes long so we're gonna have forces in the radial component equals to the mass times the acceleration in the radial component so let's see what are the forces in the R direction remember this is 45 degrees this is 45 degrees right pretty much everything makes a 45 degree angle with the coordinate system which makes it a bit easier so we're gonna have big F okay cosine 45 Okay. Let's see what else do we have. Mm, minus the normal and that'll be sine forty five minus actually it's out of the way I'm just gonna put MG sine 45 and again we're lucky it is just 45 degree angle and not like 33 or 62 or something like that because then we're really gonna have to know for sure that these sines or cosines are correct I know mine are correct but you know a lot of people always get hung up a little bit with that um, that's just because of many years of this so yeah so those are three force components that are acting on the ball in the radial direction. Mass times acceleration. Whew, okay, so now that we have this equation, now let's do it for, um, you know, this uh, the cylindrical component. So we're going to have forces along theta equals mass times a theta. Alright, forces along this other cylindrical direction. So we're going to have two, 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 two. we're going to have normal cosine 45 plus force cosine 45 minus ah, keep putting weight, minus mg uh, sine 45 equals mass times a theta oh man so you can see how crazy this gets okay so the next step in here will be to uh, isolate either F or N remember we have uh, we know the mass so we know that we so we know this we know this uh, know those do we know normal no do we know big F no that's what we're trying to look for same thing down here okay so if we plug in numbers into our equate into our calculators and figure stuff out we're gonna get n plus F equals 5.08 okay and I got that because you know, I calculate M times R, A, R together, and then I divide, factor out, again, only because um, cosine 45 and sine 45 are the same exact numbers. You factor that out of this top equation here and divide it into M, A, R, okay? So this is what, what you should get. And again, this not important you know you guys can solve it however which way but I just want you guys to see what I'm what my thought process is so I isolate uh, n plus f and then down here I get something very similar I get f 
minus n. And man, I did this poem maybe a month ago when I was making the other videos, and I haven't had a chance to to make the video, so apologize for that. And then here we have point three four seven eight. Okay. And then now that I have two equations or two unknowns, now I can solve for um, whichever one. So what I ended up getting was n equals 2.366 newtons and then f equals 2.713 newtons okay that's it so this bottom part again is similar to the problems that we've done already but the top part is the tricky one just because you know you're, you're you're bound to mess up with some derivation you you're bound to mess up with uh, the, the the chain rule um, so you know this is the part you guys should be practicing because you know this is kind of like statics at this point uh, just with the added right hand side term okay so you know just a re quick recap they gave us r and theta and all we did was take a couple of time derivatives to get r dot r double dot and theta dot theta double dot our angular uh, components and our radial components and from there plugged and chugged into our acceleration equations to get the actual acceleration components and then from there we went back to you know uh, you know regular kinematics so we're back to early chapter 12 okay guys uh, thanks thanks so much for watching uh, please ask questions always always ask uh, and then yeah hope hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for your time and attention and hope you know subscribe and like and i'll see you in the next videos thanks guys